President of the Technion, Uri Sivan, Professor Uri Sivan, Mr. Scott Limaster, Professor Oded Robinovich will come, Dr. Rafi Aviram that will come, Professor Wayne Kaplan, Vice President uh, for External Relations and Resource Development, Professor Kobe Rubinstein, Executive Vice President for Research, Professor Adi Salzberg, um, Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion, uh, Mr. Sidney Buchris, uh, Professor Jackie Schiller, of course, uh, guests from the Adelis Foundation, Technion Management, deans, faculty, students, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you all for the ceremony today. My name is Yuval Garini, I'm, from, I'm a professor at the Faculty of Biomedical Engineering, and I'm happy to be your master of ceremonies today. The ceremony is in English, but please note that we have a simultaneous translation to and from French. A famous, a famous saying says, there are two gifts we should give our children, roots and wings. Probably it needs no further explanation, but I believe that the same thing we talk, when we talk about children is the same for us as scientists, definitely on what we have to give to our students. As scientists, we possess the roots, but, that, but in order to truly soar, we need contact with society, inspiration, and support for our wings. The Technion is accordingly grateful to the Adelis Foundation, whose generous support has had profound impact on the investment of Israeli science and technology, definitely not only at the Technion, to those who are familiar with the foundation. The André Cohen de Loro Prize was established in uh, 2020, and this is the second year of distribution. Today, it is awarded to Professor Jackie Schiller from the Technion's Ruth and Bruce Rappaport Faculty of Medicine. Welcome. Thank you, Jackie. I invite two faculty members to the stage to perform for us Assistant Professor Enana Poran from the Schulich Faculty of Chemistry will sing, and Professor Alec Rubins Alex Rubinstein from the Faculty Bronstein from the Faculty of Computer Science will play the piano. As you can see, we are multi we are multi talented here. They will perform an aria by Puccini called "O mio bambino caro, my darling baby." As you will see, Technion Faculty are talented. Babino Kawa, sorry, <laughs> please.
Uh, as I said, multi-talent. Thank you very much, uh, Alexander and Anna. We will hear them later again. Uh, I'm honored to invite Professor Uri Sivan, the president of the Technion, to deliver his greetings. Please. Good morning, everybody. Scott, actually, you have a reserved seat. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you hope? Yeah. Wonderful having you all here. Um, unfortunately, uh, Mrs. Uh, Rebecca Buchis could not have joined us uh, today, but I would like to welcome her husband and partner, Sidney Buchis. Uh, And members of the Adelis uh, uh, Foundation, Professor Schiller, family, friends of her, members of the Board of Governors, dear colleagues and guests. Professor Schiller is one of the world's prominent neurobiologists. In her groundbreaking interdisciplinary work, which we are so proud to host here at the Technion, she focuses on the processing and storage of information in the cerebral co cortex. I have a feeling that I'm going through your presentation. I mean, my, the page sits on the computer. And <laughs> <laughs> storage of information in the cerebral cortex. Her work has shown invaluable light on the computational abilities of this remarkable section of the brain, teasing out the secrets of its learning mechanism and the physical transformations of its cells. And she has done all this at an unprecedented level of resolution, exploring new horizons of knowledge by investigating the mechanism that processes knowledge in the human brain. I'm therefore delighted to award the André Cohen de la Rowe Prize for 2023 to Professor Jackie Schiller of the Rappaport Faculty of Medicine. I guess we all owe her <laughs> applause. <laughs> Dear Jackie, this prize is a fitting tribute to your extraordinary research and on behalf of everyone here, let me say that I'm proud uh, that the Technion's advanced tools from the fields of imaging, genetics, virology, computation, and more are at the disposal of you uh, and find such a great use. I want to thank the Adelis Foundation for awarding the annual André Cohen de la Rowe Prize recognizing outstanding multidisciplinary research at the Technion, at the cross uh, section between engineering, sciences, and life sciences for the betterment of human life. The brilliant André Cohen de la Rowe sadly passed away in 2012, but his legacy endures in the loving hands of Mr. and Mrs. Buchris, both trustees of the Adelis Foundation. I also want to thank the Foundation for supporting the construction of the new André Cohen de la Rowe Institute for Transformative Biomedical Science and Engineering. The new institute will form an important new part of the Technion's own cerebral cortex. Its tireless capacity for knowledge and creation and retention. This unique institute will house together researchers from all disciplines, working on the same human health challenge, providing them with advanced tools from the fields of imaging, genetics, virology, computation, and more, all those fields that Jackie is so versed with. Congratulations once more, Professor Schiller, on this well-deserved award, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Uri. 
I now invite Professor Noam Ziv, also from the Faculty of uh, Medicine, who was uh, one of the members of the prize committee. Please. Well, thank you. I'll be very brief. Uh, we had wonderful candidates. It was a tough decision, but I think at the end of the day, it was quite clear uh, who the uh, uh, most uh, lead who the leading awardee is, and. Uh, uh, Although Jackie and I go back, I think we came to the Technion more or less at the same time. Uh, I think this was a pretty much unanimous decision that had uh, that had uh, really uh, was agreed on everybody. So uh, congratulations, Jackie. It makes me particularly happy to see you here. Thank you. Thank you, Noam. Uh, I now invite uh, Mr. Buchuis. Uh, please stay with us, with me. Uh, 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 Mr. Sidney Buchis is the trustee of the Adelis Foundation, and uh, as it was mentioned, the Adelis Foundation has close relations with the Technion, with huge uh, uh, support for many applications. Please. Chers membres du conseil d'administration et chers amis du Technion, c'est un honneur de représenter la Fondation Adelis pour la cérémonie de remise du prix André Cohen de l'Euro. Permettez-moi de vous dire quelques mots sur cette fondation et son créateur. Diplômée des plus prestigieuses grandes écoles françaises, l'école polytechnique de et l'école des ponts et chaussées, André Cohen de l'Euro fait une brillante carrière dans la construction pour des compagnies internationales. Après un parcours professionnel hors du commun, à la mémoire de ses parents, il souhaite réaliser le vœu de sa maman. Et il décide de créer la fondation Adelis, dont l'acronyme est de A pour André, DEL pour Deloro et IS pour Israël, avec pour objectif de contribuer au bien-être et à la sécurité de l'État d'Israël. Renouant ainsi avec ses racines, né en Égypte et lui-même grand bâtisseur, et ce n'était pas des pyramides, il a la vision d'un État d'Israël fort grâce à l'excellence de ses universités et de ses centres de recherche. Il n'avait pas tort. Aujourd'hui, Israël est une nation plus forte et plus puissante grâce à son capital humain exceptionnel et à ses centres de recherche que le monde entier nous envie. Nous sommes observés par de nombreux investisseurs dans toutes les parties du monde. Nos innovations sont analysées de peur de passer à côté d'une licorne. Pour que tout cela soit possible, il faut des moyens importants et donc que des fondations philanthropiques soutiennent la recherche et qu'elle puisse accompagner les universités et les centres de recherche en leur donnant des moyens supplémentaires. Nous connaissons l'importance du Technion dont la recherche scientifique est dans l'innovation en Israël. Ces chercheurs sont connus pour leur créativité et pour leur découverte. Aujourd'hui, la Fondation Delis est fière d'honorer par ce prix de recherche André Cohen de l'Euro, le professeur Jackie Schiller, que nous connaissons depuis de nombreuses années et pour qui nous avons un grand respect. En effet, elle a présidé le comité du jury des prix Adélis pour la recherche sur le cerveau, décerné à des jeunes scientifiques de 2015 à 2019. Nous souhaitons profiter de cette occasion pour la remercier pour son implication et du temps précieux qu'elle nous a accordé. Le professeur Jacques Schiller du département de neurosciences de la faculté de médecine de Technion, Ruth et Bruce Rapaport, cherche à comprendre la structure la plus vaste et la plus complexe du cerveau, le cortex cérébral, et ses liens avec la maladie de Parkinson, l'épilepsie, l'autisme, etc. Il ne fait aucun doute que le domaine des neurosciences est un sujet très pertinent aujourd'hui, où l'expérience de vie augmente et où la qualité de vie importe plus encore, surtout si l'on considère comme la vie peut être affectée par des, les maladies du cerveau. Je suis sûr qu'André Cohen de Loro aurait apprécié son travail de recherche, non seulement à cause des maladies concernées, mais aussi parce qu'il savait que la recherche fondamentale qui mènerait au traitement. La Fondation Adélis est ravie de pouvoir soutenir le travail d'une scientifique aussi remarquable, remarquable que le professeur Jackie Schiller. Merci à tous. Am Israel Chai. Please stay with us. Professor Sivan, please come. Okay. Okay, 
that's the price. Let me bring you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Buchris. Please stay with me. And uh, together with Uri, I now invite Professor uh, Jackie Schiller uh, to receive the prize. Let me invite again Alex and uh, Renana, this time to perform Time to Say Goodbye, a version of the melody written by Francesco Sartori with lyrics by Lucio Quarantotto. Please. Thank you again, Renana, Alex. Well, Alex, it's goodbye, but we also say later out, yes? <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. Um, the French scientist, Claude Levi Strauss, who was also Jewish, he was an anthropolo anthropologist, said once 
that the scientists should not only give good answers, but also ask very good questions. And accordingly, I invite uh, Professor Jackie Schiller to present us the work for which he received the prize. And uh, the title is How We Store Motor Memories from, from, from Dendrites to Networks. Please, Jackie. Okay, shalom everyone. Um, actually, I'm honored to, to that my work was uh, um, uh, chosen for this prize. Um, I, I'm honored that this is on the name of André Delorot, who's a true Zionist. Yeah, he is a Zionist, a true philanthropist, who's contributing from his wealth to um, the state of Israel by contributing mainly to the scientific community. Actually, as you mentioned, uh, I know this foundation quite well, and I'm really impressed by the foundation, where we, they established a collaboration between uh, Technion and Weizmann. I have to say that these ties are uh, still standing up to uh, till today. And uh, yeah, I'm proud uh, that I was chosen. Thank you. <laughs> so I, I will give, like, um, I hope, like, 15, 20 minutes of uh, what we do and why this work was chosen. I will try not to put too much jargon. Uh, I will try not to put any, any uh, equation here, uh, but I hope content will still uh, stay, that I did not strip everything. Uh, so we'll try. Um, so I'm, my long-standing interest is to understand how our brain uh, computes learns and stores information? Actually, these are uh, age-long uh, questions and uh, um, that uh, interested uh, the scientific community for ages, and not only the scientific community. I think uh, uh, humankind really wants to know answers to these questions. However, um, as I said, these are long-standing questions which are really difficult to answer, but there is hope. I think in the last decade, and neuroscientists that are here in the audience would agree with me, that there is a lot of advancement uh, in uh, many methods, but the methods are coming from a diverse set of disciplines. Engineering, uh, artificial intelligence, genetics, virology, uh, microscopy, all these methods now enable us to address the, the, these old age questions like never before. And um, I hope to show you uh, today a glimpse of what can be done with these new methods and the degree of resolution that we uh, in the lab uh, seek to uh, study these questions. So to address these uh, uh, questions, I study the cortex. And uh, the cortex is uh, the largest part uh, uh, and co most complex part of the brain. It is the outer shell of the brain, which is considered to be our thinking part of the brain. I will surprise you by saying that this uh, piece of, uh, of, uh, of brain was actually uh, uh, appeared in evolution very late. So it appeared like 230 million years ago only, and it appeared the first time in mammals. And so the cortex is the most recent and most developed part of, of our brain, of the mammalian brain. And actually, since its first appearance, it was so successful that it duplicated itself. And we can see here in this small uh, 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 movie that this, oh, the, the structure that you <coughs> see here is the cerebral cortex. And it grew a thousand times from lower mammals, uh, uh, rodents, to higher mammals up into uh, to humans. So uh, why this is uh, structure good for? So let me just uh, um, uh, name a few uh, roles uh, the, uh, of the cortex. So the cortex is actually responsible for our sensory per perception. What do I mean sensory perception? Uh, how we hear, smell, uh, uh, um, uh, feel, all this is uh, uh, mediated by the cortical uh, function. So just to give you an anecdote, everything can be uh, uh, excellent, the eyes, everything, but if a person has a stroke or something wrong with his visual part of the cortex, he'll be blind. 
So the cortex is really fundamental to, our, uh, uh, to the sensory processing. Not only that, the cortex is vital for a, a motor uh, performance and also for a, a, a acquiring a, a new skills. Importantly, the cortex is responsible for all our higher cognitive functions, such speech, language, comprehension, emotions. I would like to uh, uh, um, uh, note a, a fundamental uh, property uh, uh, of the cortex. The cortex actually is constantly changing. It has the capacity, it is a plastic, uh, uh, um, it is a plastic uh, um, uh, uh, tissue. So with this plasticity, it enables us to learn from the day we are born to the day we die. The cortex is the portion of our brain that enables us to actually uh, acquire knowledge, skills, behavior. Actually, it determines who we are. Unfortunately, the cortex is also a site for some devastating diseases, such as neurodegenerative diseases, uh, Alzheimer, like we all know, neurodevelopmental diseases such as autism, epilepsy, and more. So um, how this is done? What is this cortex? The cortex is an awesome network. So it's a, uh, the cortex is a, 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 can be considered to be a, a powerful processing machine. And actually, the single building blocks of the cortex, the neurons, the, and uh, here we can see examples of such neurons. These are pyramidal neurons, which are con considered to be the main processing unit of this extraordinary organ. Just to give you some numbers, I know that are in the audience some quantitative t uh, people. So to put numbers uh, in, my, uh, in, in this uh, structure. So the human cortex has 86, is composed of 86 roughly billion neurons interconnected by 86 trillion connections. And this uh, actually together forms a really awesome and powerful uh, network which is responsible for our uh, 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 for, for our function. However, not only that, there are now uh, uh, huge projects which are trying to identify the cell types in, the corte in our cortex and in our brain. Up to now, we can say that there are few hundreds of different cell types uh, composing the cortex, meaning, and these are arranged in a very stratified, stratified and ordered manner, which means that we have intricate sub-networks composing uh, the cortex, which really enable us to do such complex uh, 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 functions. Just to note uh, uh, for the engineering uh, 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 people that are sitting in the, in the audience here, that the cortex is actually serving a great inspiration to artificial intelligence uh, uh, network. And actually, the, the, the structure and function of the cortex uh, served inspiration for the deep neural network, which are now uh, used today and are still serving uh, uh, inspiration. So maybe I go back for a moment. I study this part of the cortex here, this uh, red, uh, this red piece here, and um, not in human. Uh, in in a mice model, which has a cortex, which is a really good model. And um, uh, uh, this piece of a cortex is responsible for our ability to move and to learn new skills. So why at all studying this part of the cortex? So actually, movement is uh, essential for life. And um, it's actually, uh, uh, movement is uh, uh, mediating our ability to uh, interact with the external world. It is practically the only way we can interact with the external world. In our daily life, we move, talk, eat, do everything uh, in an effortless manner. And we don't think even how complex it is for our brain to, to perform such uh, 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 things. And I can say that movement I is one of the most complex achievement that our brain needs uh, 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 to achieve. And uh, we, when uh, when uh, uh, it breaks, when the motor system breaks into illness, like in Parkinson's disease, we come to realize how complex it is to move, like even walk, 
and uh, uh, how it is important for our life. Uh, also, I have to say that uh, um, uh, it is a great, a great achievement of uh, our brain, as uh, uh, we know that uh, um, now, uh, today, the um, robots today do not come, even the most advanced ones, do not come close to the human ability. So this is a great triumph of, of the brain. So in my lab, we take the challenge to, to, to um, investigate how our brain, how, how the cortex, I, I, mainly the cortex, I deal with mainly the cortex, how is the cortex generates smooth and efficient movement? Uh, what changes in our brain when we learn new tasks? Where, where our uh, motor memory are stored? What goes wrong when uh, we have some motor uh, pathophysiology in the motor system, like in Parkinson's disease? And uh, what I would like uh, today to, to just give you a, a glimpse of uh, um, w how we approach these questions. So I will try to describe our findings from this uh, uh, recent paper, which actually was submitted to the committee. Uh, and um, um, so it will be just a glimpse. It's a heavy paper, and I will try just to, to give you a taste of what we did. So um, actually, um, in, this, in, this, uh, uh, in this work, we took a unique approach to study the question I just told you. And the, this unique approach was to study the single uh, neuron and its parts. What do I mean it, its parts? Here you can see a single neuron. This is how a single neuron in our cortex looks. This is actually a piece of a human cortex uh, uh, that you see here. It's a piece, a piece of a human cortex. If we take a single neuron, we can see that this neuron has a tree-like structure. And this tree-like structure is called the dendritic tree. These are dendrites. So what are dendrites? Dendrites are the site of communications between neurons. So all the communication, all the synapses between neurons happen at dendritic structures, at sites which are called dendritic spines. And so actually, all the processing, learning, and storage occur at, at this location. This is why we wanted to study them. So typically, I would just say again some numbers. Uh, such a neuron uh, receives around 10,000 contacts and need to process them. Uh, uh, in its dendritic structure to uh, um, achieve the output. The output is in the form of action potentials. How the neuron does this input tra output transformation? We only know partial things about it. I will talk a little bit more. But just to tell you that this is a really complex mission. Imagine, imagine that you had 10,000 friends that you needed to communicate with and manage in a moment-to-moment -moment basis. This is a very tough uh, 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 mission to accomplish. So what do we know about uh, this input-output transformation that the, this single neuron uh, perform? So during the years, um, and it was a contribution also for my lab, we learned quite a bit about the uh, computation capabilities of the single neurons and about the plasticity capabilities. So here, what you see is actually a, an artificial network. And this single neuron in this artificial network actually is considered to be a very simple creature. It takes its input and it implies one single nonlinearity. And this is its output. Actually, what's happening in a cortical uh, 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 neuron, this is something very different. We know from uh, the in vitro studies and from modeling studies that actually a single neuron can implement a cascade of complex nonlinear functions. And actually, uh, the simulations show that this cascade of nonlinear functions can amount to a small subnetwork. So actually, the single neuron, the single element in our cortex, is by itself. Uh, 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 can uh, operate by itself like a small subnetwork. So now we know that this, this neuron can be very powerful in its computations. But what is really happening in vivo uh, when the animal is performing a relevant task 
is it like that really? Or is it more close to this simple neuron that we see here that is used in artificial uh, uh, networks? And this is what we wanted to know in this study. So how do we do that? We actually, um, I know the answer, you just need to go and, and, uh, and actually measure the activity along with, uh, in a wake animal, performing the task under the microscope and just record the activity and see the function of these neurons. Here you see an example of what can be done today and I can tell you that 10 years ago we couldn't do such experiments. So under the microscope, here you can see these flashes of lights are the, uh, uh, signifies the activity of neurons. And now we can record from many hundreds, even many thousands of neurons simultaneously. But not only that, we can record also from their parts, from dendrites and axons and synapses. And this gives us an opportunity really to study in very high resolution the functions of, of the neurons. So this is what we wanted to do. However, there is a problem. And actually, the majority of the community is studying only, uh, only the soma. And the soma, if you record only from the soma, you record only the output. You are agnostic of what transformation happened at the dendritic sites. As I said, these are the, the sites where learning happens, where memory is found. And you actually disregard all this structure and only record the output. It's not by mistake, because it's very hard. This type of experiments are, pose a huge challenge. And this is the challenge we took uh, uh, on ourselves in this uh, specific study. So we wanted to record from the input sites, the dendrites, and from the output sites, the soma, and try to understand what algorithms does the neuron uh, perform on its input to achieve the output. And we did that in a single cell resolution uh, during behavior of the animal under the microscope. So here you can see this is just a scheme of, of uh, the cell types that we can encounter in the motor cortex, the part of the cortex I'm studying. And actually what we were able in this study not only study just a single cell, but to study the, uh, a specific type. We were able to pinpoint the specific type of neurons, which are called PT, the pyramidal tract neurons. This in, uh, we see them in blue here. And why we wanted to study these specific uh, uh, neurons? Because these neurons actually uh, are the, uh, uh, provide the main output of the system. So these neurons sense the commands, the output motor commands from the cortex down to subcortical region to initiate movement. So we wanted actually to access specifically this type of neurons. How we did that? Actually, we used viral and genetic methods to access specifically this type of neurons. And uh, after we knew we are accessing them, we expressed in these neurons protein sensors, which could, with this protein sensor, we could, we could actually, uh, um, uh, um, we could actually reconstruct the structure of the, of a single neuron. All this, I remind you, in vivo, under the microscope. And then we could use the protein sensors, other protein sensors, to actually record the activity. And the trick here was to assign the specific activity to the structure of the neuron. All this was performed uh, by a, a, a cranial window, as you see here. So we take a piece of a scalp, and uh, instead we put a glass so we can look into the brain of the animal, and we can do it longitudinal. We keep these animals by many weeks and months sometimes. They have names, and uh, we get to know them. They get to know us. So uh, what do we see? So here you have uh, two movies, two examples of the activity. These flashes are actual responses from dendrites. And you can immediately see, and this, this was taken during behavior that the animal w uh, did. And already you can uh, uh, get the impression of a, a, a big diversity in the activity of these dendrites 
during uh, the task. So um, I will tell you now our, uh, one of our main results in this study. So actually, to our big surprise, we identified two types of signaling in these dendrites. One type, and I will not go uh, too much into details, but uh, for those who are interested, here you see uh, a, a correlation matrices arranged according to the tree structure, and the hot color are, uh, uh, sh are signifying uh, 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 closer correla uh, higher correlations. But what we can see, I can summarize, is that we observe pronounced independent activity across the dendritic branches, we, which you can see here in these close correlations. Which means that during learning, uh, different motor memories are written into different segments of this, uh, of this uh, uh, dendritic tree, of this neuron. And actually are written then, in, engraved there, and stored there. The other type of uh, uh, neurons that we observed uh, showed a, a completely different representation in its dendrites, and you can see it here. So what you can see here is now it is m much more uniform, which says that this neuron is not segregating the information to different locations in the tree, but rather it performs the inverse operation. It actually globally integrating the information to uh, issue a motor uh, command. This was not accidental. What we noticed that actually these two types of representations in the dendritic tree were highly correlated with two morphological structures of the neurons. So actually we have two types of pyramidal tract neurons which we could identify according to their dendritic structure. So uh, we were able, by uh, later work, we were able, using anatomical uh, uh, studies, to identify this uh, type, the, the, the one which showed uh, uh, the uh, parallel representation, we were able to identify them as being the specific neurons, as being the specific neurons which sends their output down to the spinal cord, actually issuing movement. So. To summarize, uh, uh, actually we have identified a unique type of, of, uh, of uh, 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 processing. Uh, these neurons can multitask. They represent large number of motor uh, memories. And actually, I don't have time to elaborate, uh, they are actually well, well suited for the role for continual uh, motor learning throughout life. Um, I think I'm getting some clues to end. But uh, very important, let me just, um, uh, this work could not have uh, been uh, uh, done without uh, an amazing team that I had. Yara and uh, Shai, can you come please? <laughs> So these are the two uh, incredible two MD, PhD, uh, PhD students. I'm really honored. I was honored to work with two extremely talented, which I can tell you that this work uh, demanded few years of development uh, of the tools and methods and analysis. And uh, these are really two incredible students. I'm honored to, that I was able to work with. And... Um, <laughs> It takes a village. This was the small village who contributed to this work. Everything is Technion made, including Alon Polsky, who was my first MD PhD student, which we collaborated on uh, for the uh, modeling studies. He actually worked with Shai to do the modeling of this work. Um, yeah, and uh, this is the whole lab. Thanks very much, Eki. It was really inspiring. And congratulations again for the prize. Thank you very much, the Adelis Foundation and yourself. And thanks all the audience for coming here. And uh, see you in the other ceremonies later on. Thank you. <laughs>